And that is, I've got to review for you guys, um, the magical, I'm sorry, the American Society of Magical Negroes. Um, this movie is interesting. Now, a lot of us saw the initial teaser trailer when that first came out. And I think a lot of us was like, oh, snaps. This is the black version of Harry Potter. Like, here we go. We about to get black Hogwarts, right? And, you know, then the trailer came out. And I did a reaction to the trailer. And it did not come out the way I think a lot of us hoped, you know. Um, it was a very different movie than what we probably initially thought it would be. So, you know, uh, it stars Justice Smith, uh, as you see there on the left, and David Allen Greer. Um, and the the general idea is that this is a young man, Aaron, that's played by Justice. He's recruited into a secret society of magical black people who dedicate their lives to a cause of utmost importance. And that cause is making white people's lives easier. All right. Now, before I get started in this, let me just kind of explain what this whole magical Negro thing is. Now, a magical Negro is, it's a term that was coined or at least made popular by Spike Lee. I want to say back in like 2001. Um, and Spike Lee basically was talking about, it's a character stereotype for black people in films and movies, right? So for example, you could have Michael Clark Duncan in The Green Mile. Um, you could have Will Smith in The Legend of Bagger Vance. Um, you know, you could have uh, Morgan Freeman in um, uh, Bruce Almighty or whatever, right? The magical Negro stereotype is basically a black character that lives for the sole purpose of supporting and uplifting the white protagonist's main character. Um, and the reason why it's a harmful stereotype is because, in my opinion, what it does is it puts Black people on a weird spectrum with no in-between. Either we are portrayed or thought about as being ghetto, hood, criminals, you know, degenerates, whatever, or we have to be exceptionally magical, wise, spiritual people that can't make white people uncomfortable. So these two very unrealistic parallels, what they end up doing is they erase the realistic humanity that gets depicted of black people or black characters. So you never care about the characters um desires their goals you don't care about how they're feeling because you're so focused on the main white character all right so that's the ins and outs of the black magical negro stereotype in film and television so when you see that you know you got to kind of wonder and be like wait a minute what's going on here you know so anyway let me give the good you know, for this, in my opinion, right? I liked Justice Smith. I thought he did a, a pretty good job with the role that he was given. And I also liked David Allen Greer. I thought that he was actually pretty good. And, you know, he had some funny moments as well. Um, and, you know, overall, they had pretty decent, you know, on-screen chemistry together. And that worked, right? It worked. The other thing I will give this film points for is, you know, obviously in the title, The Magical Negroes, it did communicate in an effective way what that trope looked like and how it would act. So when you watch this movie, if you didn't know what The Magical Negro was or how it moved or operated, you do this movie does do a good job in educating you into what that is right it does do that and it accomplishes that uh that feat i would say successfully another thing that this movie does and because it is a, a, a satire so it is comedy right it is a satire 
it does a pretty good job of exasperating and displaying white tone deafness. So what I mean by that is it will show you certain examples that some white people exhibit that show how they could be tone deaf to racial issues in society. OK, so again, it it's really just showing you different stereotypes for different types of people to try to illustrate a point of racial complexity in society. It does that. It does that. That's it. Now we have to talk about the bad. This movie. Overall tries to talk about the racial issues for black people. It also tries to talk about the magical element, you know, of the magical Negro. And as you can see here, it's also a romantic comedy. Now, I'll go into this a little bit later in the reason as to why this is problematic. But in general, the plot is messy. And the reason why I say it's messy is because dealing with race on its own, especially American racism, is already a messy, complicated topic. So let me give you like some quick parallels. Being black in America, that's one level. That's hard enough. That's a lot. Listen, we got a lot to talk about. We got stuff people still don't want to talk about, you know, like reparations. That's one level right there. This movie, by using the magical Negroes, tackles that, being black in America. Then you have the other complexity when it comes to race of colorism. This movie tries to get into colorism, but doesn't really. So you have being black, then you have being, you know, lighter skin, but then you also have the issue of being biracial, which the main character, Aaron, actually is. So when you sit here and talk about being black in America, having the colorism issue, and then being biracial, that's a lot to talk about. And then you want to throw a rom-com on top of that. And then you want to throw in the sci-fi fantasy element of magic too much, too fast. This movie couldn't handle all of that because something suffers somewhere down the line because things kind of get touched or they don't get fully explored. And that ultimately leaves with a less than satisfying outcome when it comes to the overall story, the romance to me felt very forced. I did not care for it. It did not make a lot of sense. Um, I thought that the movie was strong enough to keep going with the whole magical Negro thing. That was enough in itself. But to force the romance in there on top of that, I just don't know how it helped. And it sometimes it didn't make sense, especially once we get to the ending, and I mean that, I'm not going to spoil it because whatever, but that just did not help. <sighs> also, the end of the film, when you get to the end, you know, I personally felt as though the ending was not earned. And a lot of that was because the messy story was all over the place. Because we're dealing with racism, because we're trying to figure out this romantic situation, because we're trying to deal with this joke or whatever, or whatever comedy, because we're dealing with white people and white stereotypes, by the time we get to the ending, some of the stuff just don't feel, it doesn't feel earned, and it doesn't pay off at all. You know, um, I put it this way, you know, at the end of Barbie, how they had that America Ferreira moment. You have something similar here. And I was just like, man, whatever. Like, whatever. Like, it just, it didn't feel, mm, mm, meh, meh. It just didn't, it didn't hit right. 
It just did not hit right. So you have all this stuff working up, building up, and it just did not get to the end that would have made it kind of helpful. And then I also have this other issue too. I don't know if this movie does a good job to help educate white audiences. I don't even know if black audiences will find this helpful or appealing. And I don't know if this will gravitate to people, let's say, that are outside of black and white ethnicities. In other words, I don't know who this movie is for. Because a lot of times when you're trying to communicate these type of topics, you're trying to also engage audiences, hopefully on different levels, to educate them. And I don't think that the writing was strong enough, or I'm sorry, the writing wasn't focused enough to actually communicate these things effectively. It was trying to do too much again. So that, you know, I kind of put on the director and the writer, Kobe Libby. Um, the lack of focus, especially doing all this heavy lifting with the already complex themes, it was too much, man. It was just too much. So now let me get down to the reason. <sighs> Magical Negroes, I'm sorry, the American Society of Magical Negroes is... It, it it's it's a complex film that tries to tackle a very sensitive topic in a comedic way and ultimately fails at that endeavor. It bites far too much off than it can actually chew. There isn't enough comedy in this movie to help make up for how far it missed the mark that it ambiguously tried to hit. Now, some people will compare this movie to American fiction. The f movie was also American fiction was, you know, it had comedy. It dealt with racial stereotypes, um, you know, but it actually stuck the landing. I would say that this uh, American society of magical Negroes is like American fiction light. It's a diet American fiction. You know, it, it's it's a uh, we have get out at home. You know, it's not it just doesn't actually do what it was trying to do. And like I said, I don't know who this is for. I don't know if I can say, man, white America, y'all got to watch this because I don't think they're going to get it. I don't think I could sit here and say, hey, brother, hey, sister, you got to go watch this because I don't think it's going to be appealing for them. Not to mention, oh, I'm going to get into that later. I'll get into that later. But. This movie is kind of all over the place. And, and again, I'm not trying to tear it down, but I would hope that, you know, if the director was even watching, I doubt it, that they would just learn from this, that there was something in this film that could have been easier received if it was just a little bit more simplified. So when it comes to the rating for um, the American Society of Magical Negroes, I have to give this a five and a half out of 10. Um, it's just not a very good movie. It had good intentions, but my goodness, it was just definitely not something um, I thought that understood the assignment. I thought that it tried to do too much too fast and it just did not work out. So um, yeah, this is not something I would say you would have to hurry to go see. Um you're not going to see me recommend it. I'm not going to recommend it. I'm not saying you should, shouldn't go watch it. If you're curious, feel free, whatever. You're not going to get me to tell you you got to hurry up and go see it. Um, but if you do plan on watching uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes, please feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, especially after you've seen it. Come on back to this video and let me know. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out the next time I drop a video. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.